Welcome back everyone. If you've watched more than a few videos on this channel, you know that I have quite a few videos on backpacking bidets and I'm currently developing my own backpacking bidet, the Holy Hiker backpacking bidet, which will be available soon, if not by the time this video is out. And during the development of the my bidet um, and through my other videos, I've gotten so many questions left in comments and also uh, email to me. And so what I figured I would do is I would just do a very, in the style of this channel, a very simple video, me, you, in the woods, talking about and answering some of the most commonly asked questions about using a backpacking bidet. Now, if this is the first bidet video you've stumbled upon, this video is not about convincing you to use one or showing you how to use it. So this is just answering questions that come after you've watched the other videos or after you have tried a bidet. So keep that in mind. Um, and just to be upfront, uh, I'm gonna, instead of doing one long video, I'm gonna break this up and I'm going to do six questions in each video. Uh, the questions that are gonna be in this video is about filtering your water, how much water, uh, do you have to use your hands, uh, drying your butt, practicing and a, do you need a dedicated bottle so if those questions are not interesting to you and you don't need to know the answers to those don't bother watching the video um, I'm gonna do a second video with a second set of questions maybe there'll be one in there but or if you have a question that's not in this video uh, please feel it leave it in the comments and if I get enough I'll throw them all into a third video all right so here we go do you need to filter your water before squirting your butt with it that has got to be like one of the number one questions that I've gotten. And I think the, the, the best analogy is you just jump in a lake and go swimming without filtering the water. You go into a river swimming without filtering the water. And when you go into a lake or if you go into a river, that water is not only going up into your butt, touching your butt, but it's also in your ears and your eyes and your nose and you're getting it in your mouth, no matter how tight you think you're closing your mouth. And so, no, you don't need to filter the water before using it for a bidet. Uh, second question, how much water on average do you use? Now, this is definitely a question. A lot of flies today. Um, this is definitely a question, this is definitely an answer that is different depending on your skill level. So a lot of new bidet users are gonna use a lot of water. Um, experienced bidet users are gonna use a little water. How much? Now, I've had a lot of the people who have tested out the Holy Hiker, they've gotten it down to 150 to 250 milliliters of water. So they're using like a quarter cup of water for every cleaning. Uh, there are inexperienced users that are going to be using more than a half a cup. And I know on somebody else's channel, they have a, a how to use a bidet and they, they use a lot of water. I mean, there's just a lot of, because of how they clean their butt, they're using even more water than that. So I think to give you safe numbers, if you're a new user, I think you can definitely get it done in a half a cup or left. And if you're an experienced user, again, you're going down to that quarter cup or so. Um, next question. And I should also add, it depends on the bidet that you're using. So something like a Kulo Clean is one big spray. And you know, people, obviously, if you've looked on the internet, people love that bidet and it's gonna give you a big spray. It's not necessarily concerned about conserving water. And then you'll have a lot of other bidets that are gonna use less water. So it also you know, depends on the bidet that you're using. Um, do you have to check with your hands after squirting? This is also a question which comes down to inexperienced, new, and experienced. Um, I find that a lot of the experienced users do not end up doing a lot of wiping with their hands. Um, versus people that are brand new, they're always going to want to check with their hand. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? You, you got to establish some degree of trust with the bidet, right? And so, and then there's everything in between. So some people who are brand new to using a bidet, and I've seen people on YouTube recommend this way to do it, although it's, this one's too gross for me, is that as you're spraying, you're wiping. And that's one way of getting it done. Um, the other thing that people will do is they'll spray and then they'll check and if they need more spray They spray some more and then one of my testers uh, Just wrote back the other day and said what he does is he will spray 
and then just use a couple sheets of toilet paper as the final check to make sure. So not using the full load of toilet paper, but just a couple of sheets. Now, I think as you, again, as you get more experienced, you simply know, you know, let, let's say you're new and you're always using your hand. And then you realize that like the last 20 times you use the bidet, there's nothing on your hand. Well, then you kind of, know, you know, you, you know in your head how much spray you need, how long you have to spray your butt for, and you just, you kind of get that, that vibe, that feeling. So I think for that question there, do you have to check with your hands after squirting? I'd say no, but let's face it. If you're new, you're definitely going to want to check just to make sure until you get that level of trust between you and the bidet. Um, how do you dry your butt after using a bidet? God, that is so often asked um, through emails and, and YouTube comments. Think of it this way. If you go swimming, when you get out of the water, you don't dry your butt, right? It's just kind of, no, no one's going up and drying their butt. When you get out of the shower, I don't know, maybe other people do, but you're not putting a towel up there in your butt, right? And, and drying the crack of your butt. Eh, maybe some people are. And it's the same thing with the bidet. With the bidet, it's a very focused stream. So you're not getting your whole backside wet you're just getting a very tiny ear, tiny area wet. And because this is a very common question, I think it was like last year or something, I decided that on my backpacking trips, I was gonna time the amount of time it took my butt to feel dry. And then I would have a legit answer to this. And what ended up happening is literally, I would use the bidet, I would say, okay, it is you know, 1035, let's see how long it takes. And it would be like four hours later and I'd be like, oh, I never paid attention. You know, three hours, oh, I never paid attention. So with the exception of the first couple of times you use it and you're like, ah, oh, I feel a little wet. It's just, it's gone. It's a feeling that's gone. You're never going to notice it. You'll never realize it. You don't have to dry your butt. Uh, next one. I can practice setting up my tent in my yard before I go backpacking. I can practice with my stove before I go backpacking. How do I practice with a bidet before I go backpacking? How do you practice with a bidet? So a couple of ways. The first one is if you're lucky enough to have a big backyard, this is my backyard, um, I go bidet in my backyard every day, almost every day, because I'm constantly testing out uh, the, the, the prototypes that I'm making for my Holy Hiker bidet. And so I'm basically every single day in my backyard. There are other people who have big backyards. Don't hesitate to go find a corner of your yard. The other thing that people have done is if you have a fairly good sized backyard, go out in the middle of the night in darkness <laughs> and experiment then. You know, beyond the neighbor's floodlights, dig a little hole in your yard and people have done that, you know, behind a bush or whatever. I've gotten some really funny emails about people sneaking out with their bottle and their bidet where their spouse and their kids couldn't see them or they were caught coming back in with it and they were you know, questioned about why they were out in the darkness with the bottle. So that's, that's one thing. Um, a lot of people will just go hiking in their, their local parks, like you know, state park, that sort of thing. Um, but I think the number one way, uh, if you are living in an apartment, uh, if you're living in you know, a small neighborhood, is in the shower, not when you poop. Um, I don't think you should hesitate about just experimenting with the bidet without pooping because especially if you're new and you're asking that question why wait until you have to pull off on the side of the trail somewhere you might have hiking partners waiting for you and now all of a sudden you're going to try to bidet for the first time there's your squat you're worrying about there's the angle you're worrying about there's am i going to hit my there's all sorts of things that are going through your head and so the, what I recommend the most is just doing it in your shower, not after you poop, just literally when you go to shower, take your bottle in, take your bidet in. I know it's going to feel a little bit weird, but pop a squat in your bathtub, in your shower stall, and just try squirting there because you got nothing to lose. You could miss, you could spray all over the place. You can experiment freely. Nobody's watching you, hopefully. Nobody is paying attention you don't have any kind of time constraints or any even hygiene constraints because you haven't pooped yet. And so just experiment in the bathroom. 
feel that squirt and be like, ah, oh, I can't hit my butt. You know, just experiment in the bathtub uh, or the shower stall first before you poop. Don't have the pressure of pooping the first time you experiment. Um, and the last one for this video, do I need a dedicated bottle for my bidet? Now, I know that people are going to have a lot of opinions on this one. Um, I do not have a dedicated bottle for this. And let me tell you how I came to this conclusion. When I first started making bidet videos, this again was a very common question. And so I thought to myself, well, is my bottle actually getting some backsplash and I don't even know about it? And what I ended up doing is I wrapped my bidet bottle in toilet paper for like a week and I'd bring it out and I'd go and use it. And then I, as soon as I'm done, I would check it and I never noticed any splashing on the toilet paper. And again, the reason for the toilet paper is because, you know, if you get like just one little drop on toilet paper, it makes it soft and you can see it. So I figured it would be very noticeable on the toilet paper. And I never had any backsplash uh, going up onto that toilet paper. I know other people would never consider doing that and they bring a dedicated bottle. Um, you know, if you really want to bring one, you can buy just like a tiny little water bottle and use that. Um, but again, uh, I don't feel the need to bring a dedicated bottle. I've experimented. I've tried to like see if there's any way of getting backsplash on it. And the reality is, I think once you start using a bidet, you realize that you're not getting backsplash and you're not even getting splashed down onto the bottle. You don't stick the bottle under your butt. When you're holding the bottle out, it's kind of just through angles and physics, it's really hard to get any water splashing back to your bidet. It all splashes down or at an angle away from your bidet. So those are the first six questions. Uh, I'll do another video soon with another six questions. And actually I'll record it soon. I'll probably post them somewhat back to back. Uh, if you have any other questions that would like to be answered in a third video, please leave them in the comments and I will compile a list and answer your question in the third video. So happy bidetting folks. And uh, that's it for this one.